Hi, this is your host, Sabin Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFLS Talk. We are here at KubeCon in Detroit, and today we have with us Asaf Kohan, co founder and CTO of Permit.io. Asaf, it's great to have you on the show. It's great to be here. Uh, first of all, since you are a co founder of the company, uh, you have background, you come from Facebook, Microsoft. So, talk a bit about you know, the, the, why you created this company. My experience as a software engineer was uh, around uh, cryptography and dev tools and uh, cybersecurity. And uh, when I was working at Facebook, I was mostly focused on dev tools. So I was, was doing uh, things like um, making engineers' lives better, um, doing things like testing infrastructure and uh, code signals. And when I left Facebook, I just wanted to do something that helps developers. So uh, when Or and I was talking about uh, starting a company together, uh, we just like um, thought about problems that we know from developers' lives. And when I talked to Or about a thing at Facebook called interstitials that is meant to uh, improve data privacy within the company, so it gates uh, uh, software engineers access to to important data, um, and that's how the company keeps everything safe and prevent uh, um, uh, un, uh, unauthorized access. Then um, he said to me, "Listen, Asaf, I did uh, build. I built uh, authorization within Rookout five times. So this was a big problem for us. And then we started shooting ideas, how it looks like, and who is the end user, and what it solves. And uh, we just started talking to customers and starting to figure out this world together. And uh, it was pretty quick once we like really realized that the scope of the problem it's huge. It's like it's so painful for developers to to build it themselves." And we just wanted to help. Since you talk about you know how painful it is for developers, I also want to understand, first of all, how different is uh, uh, building permissions in cloud as compared to you know traditional ID infrastructure. Let's say ten years in software like change everything. We used to have simple infrastructure. You used to have a monolith application. You uh, used a framework. Let's say your uh, application was in Django, which is a Python uh, framework. You'd had a Django permissions uh, uh, framework, and it was pretty simple. Everyone wanted the RBAC, and it was uh, very simple to write. But now we have microservices, and this exploded, right? I can have a service with tens of services, and each one of them needs uh, to enforce access in the same way uh, across the organization. And that is something required uh, 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 by the security org, you have to have uh, uh, the same kind of uh, enforcement. And um, uh, if you look at things like uh, duplicating the code, obviously it's bad because it can create a drift between implementations and it can create security incidents. So the first thing is to actually centralize access within uh, your uh, within your uh, implementation and. Uh, Add on top of that, that today you have different requirements. So you have you have more compliance standards. You have to uh, maintain more user privacy. You have HIPAA. You have SOC2. You have um, CCNA. All of this kind of um, uh, regulations on you, uh, and forces you to do something that is auditable, that you can actually track uh, any user action to who did that. Um, you might need something like. Attribute-based access control, which recently released in Permit, where you might want to get access based on the user location, is the user paying, uh, or any other attribute that you want. So access in general became much more complex due to regulation and more customer demand and more customer awareness for privacy. And the infra became much more uh, difficult to write because of microservices. And that creates a huge problem for companies. Uh, and that is why it's so co complicated. Of course, just like a lot of things in cloud native world, it's like things you know move fast. You know there are a lot of new technologies coming in. A company like Permit, you know, you folks are like one and a half year old. Talk a bit about uh, since you're in. Of course, you have a long background with Facebook and Microsoft. But in this, you know, what, one and a half year, how have you seen the landscape change? Where you know when you talk about permissions, you're like folks understand this problem. They do understand that hey, they do have to contain things. Versus you feel that hey, no, there is still a lot of need for awareness. It's actually both. So awareness is growing, and people understand that authorization is a huge problem. And you can see more companies in this space trying to improve the situation. So you have uh, companies trying to uh, implement their own uh, uh, variant of Google Zanzibar. You see policy agents that do policy as code. You see us that are doing full stack permissions. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of awareness and buzz around authorization because authorization is a big problem. At the same time, 
uh, developers are not yet aware that there are solutions in the markets, and there is, uh, uh, it is something that we see developers start looking at. Uh, they, they, they do understand there's a problem, they do their research, they're starting learning that there are solutions here. And obviously, um, we are improving the situation by educating the market about the problem and helping customers. Some customers we help with uh, in-house implementation. We just advise them uh, how to do it correctly because uh, we want to help. Talk a bit about your presence here, what you're showcasing, because this is also a big you know, place where you can educate folks. We are uh, showing at our booth um, demos of the product, and I'm just like uh, trying to show customers like what is it all about? Like, how would you think about permissions? We are showing them our newest attribute-based access control support where uh, you can have more complex rules and more granularity within your policy, um, showing them our low-code editor. And um, yeah, and typically just asking general um, permissions questions. Some of them come to me and they say, I searched for this so long, I eventually went and like implemented something at our uh, at our company, and it's the, the worst, and there's so much problems, and like, can we migrate, and how migrations work into the product, and it's like, uh, it's really interesting conversations. So when, you know, folks like this, you know, walk to, and you say, hey, yeah, we had the in-house solution, but it's not, you know, working, so, so what advice do you have, you know, we are here, the Kubernetes, Cloudinate Cloud, for the Kubernetes user, you know, how they should approach, you know, permissions, you know, the right way, for access control. There are two, two problems here, okay? There's infrastructure level authorization and there's uh, end user and, or application authorization. It's not the same thing. So for uh, end user authorization, it's pretty simple. You want to have one microservice that gates access. You want, to, you want to use a policy agent and do policy as code. And you want to uh, also think about end user interfaces and experiences for end users, let them actually control access themselves. Uh, so think about your stakeholders as well. Uh, Permit gives you all of these things, but you can also implement them yourself. And I had a talk at SecurityCon showing the best practices how to actually do it for yourself. So in that uh, sense, just um, uh, keep to the best practices and implement this correctly as a microservice in your uh, organization. For Kubernetes, you think about um, getting access within uh, Kubernetes. Who are the developers that can actually uh, affect my uh, uh, implementation, who can uh, push new pods to production, who can uh, change a deployment, uh, install a helm chart, etc. So for that, um, you want to use stuff like Kubernetes admission controllers and uh, attach a policy agent like Open Policy Agent, OPA, uh, to that. Uh, the cool thing is Permit can attach to that as well. Um, we have a GitOps feature where you can actually control all your OPAs through OPAL. And if you need um, to uh, use uh, a central control plane to manage all your admission controllers, you can do that with Opal or open source, which is Apache 2, or with Permit. Asap, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, share your uh, journey, your story, and the creation of Permit.io, and also your advice to Kubernetes user, how they should approach you know, uh, permissions. Thanks for those insights, and as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure, Swap, to be here, and thank you for your uh, kind and uh, insightful questions.